Jamaicans are usually very highly skilled people. Some of us born with it naturally while others of us learn as we progress through life. In fact, some people have some skills that they don't even know are skills and these skills can be quite profitable. There are common skills like painting, electrical, plumbing and things like that. And especially in Jamaica, there's a man for everything. You have a fridge man, a stove man, a washing machine man, a fan man, you name it, Jamaica has a man for it. And and the ability to carry out those tasks is because of the skills that people have and sometimes they don't even know that these skills can be maximized whatever it is there's a market for it and it's up to that individual to maximize the earning potential of their skill set in this video we'll be speaking to a highly skilled gardener who has been using his skill set to earn a living we'll also be giving you some tips on how you can do the same so if that's something that you're interested in I'm going to encourage you to keep on watching remember to like comment share subscribe follow me on all socials at Rushlin and let's just hurry up and get into the video no? let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go hello everyone yeah I'm Ches Dean mm-hmm man that work hard definitely no. Definitely work hard. I know that with hard work, I can achieve what I want. That's why I do it. No other reason. Definitely. Yeah. So Ches Dean, among many things, he's a gardener. And I want you to tell us how exactly you become a gardener here in Jamaica. How did that start for you? Well, actually, I grew up in Clarendon, you know, straight farming. But coming to Kingston, you don't have anywhere to farm, so... I know a guy who do the gardening and I always accompany him to him lo location. Mm -hmm. So from then, I start to cut one and two per se yard till I get a lot of customers. So that's how it all began. And by gardening, you mean like going around with a weed walker? Right, and with the, cut the cutter. Other. Yeah. And you're going to do people the premises, the premises so. private property, right. etc. Yes. Right? What was it like the first time that you actually went to do a gardening job? Well, it never liked art because, you know, I used to certain hard work. So, I just know typically raking up, sweeping up mm -hmm. till I get a chance to use the machine, you know, mm -hmm. to catch my practice from there. I do my little thing, you know, till I buy one of my uncle, tell him some I'd like to do it, and him help me out with a walker. Mm -hmm. And from there I buy many after that, so. But because that was going to be my next question, like, did you have any equipment when you were just starting? No. So you were using the person that you went with first, Right, right. Our other people have their machine that I use at their yard, you know. So yeah. I, okay, so you never even rented any? No. no, no, no you no. used that one until your uncle bought one. Mm -hmm, and then and you, from that, yeah, so you earn and can do it yourself. Right. Okay. So how many walk-on machines you would say you have now? Well, I don't, I, won't, I don't have a lot, but what I do, I like buy a new one when one deteriorated. Mm -hmm. So I help out other people, like other man who need one. I like actually sell them for a little price. Uh, so that's how, that's how I really do it. Cause one hand clap another, you have to help, you know? Yeah. You know, I have a nine to five, so, you know, five days a week, me have to left out for go to my institution to work, you know? So, so say gardening is only done on the weekends? Right, yeah, for myself. Okay. Did you know you have the skill before? Or it's just from trying and then you realize they have it. It's something that you didn't know from your growing up? Well, I never really know it, but I know farming. So farming, you have to clean up the land to, mm -hmm. to cultivate it. So it's, it, it have a lot to do. But you know, normally you use machine to clean the land at country. But to do gardening, you know, you have to use the walk a lawn more and all those things. You know, so that's the only difference. Okay. You had an idea of the skill, but after doing it over and over, yeah, it becomes easy. It became easier. Yeah, man, it comes like nothing. Man. And then you're able to monetize it. Right. So, how do you get your customers? Well, actually, uh, one customer gives me another customer. 
So actually a customer that I have will introduce me to a, a friend or next door I will be working next door and the neighbors like what they're seeing and I will get that and they will so it, it you know so that's how it really unfold for me. Okay, so it's word of mouth promotion mostly for you. Okay, and that's one for not, not even too. not even the word of mouth, but you know people see what you do, cause people even driving, passing, like mm -hmm. what I do and you know all, you know just ask for my number and all of that, you know? Okay. So you definitely ensure that whatever you're doing, you have to put out the best. Yeah, the best sure is the best is the best, you know? Yeah, make sure that you're doing a good job at all times. Definitely. Cause that is the secret I think. Yeah. I have a lot of gardener. So actually, I never lose customer unless, you know, you know, they, they decide or me not really go back or something. Mm. But I normally lose customer. I have customer for like over 14 years. 14? 14. For a long time, I do it. Long, long time. So then you're saying that your customer service, you definitely have to keep that up. Yeah, you have That's to keep it. that up so people have that respect for you. People have to trust you as well to come on them, them premises. Their property, yeah. Yeah. So that are the most important part. Trust. trust. And you have to just focus on what you do with them. Yeah. And you work with your integrity. Yeah. And you just be honest. Work to you your best of your ability. You do what you're supposed to do. Guys, look how uh, we did your interview him at work, you know. Tell us what it is that you're making right here, you know? Well it's some stepping stone that you walk on, they put in the lawn. Mm -hmm. So they all boats in other places, so mm -hmm. doing it from a yard here. So instead of to buy it, I can make it. You just need a little concrete in it. Okay. When it dry you remove it. That's it. Mm -hmm. And not we really hard. Again, putting another skill to use. And while he's not necessarily like selling this skill right now, he's he's saving because he would have had to go and pay for this. So because he learned how to do it. He can now use the skill to do it to save him some money. So it still works out, huh? Right. <laughs> save a lot, you know. You have to learn to help yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody has to live, but at the end of the day, if I can do it, it's all cheaper and it's all stronger. Mm -hmm. Right? So I mean, I put in what I'm supposed to put in to, to make it strong, you know? Definitely. So tell me something, was there ever a time when you were starting that you had done any of this gardening work for free? Yeah, even for my church, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually just cut it and, you know, till they start to pay me. I normally help out neighbors, like when I'm cutting, I just cut like everybody yard and then they give me a thing, you know? Mm -hmm. uh. And one most important is that they do it well so that they can recommend it. Right. That is a secret. Yeah. Sorry. He is forever booked out. <laughs> forever booked out. And everybody that I know that uses him, usually use him for a very long time. Yeah, years. Yeah. Know? And that speaks to the kind of person and the kind of work that he does, which is what? A lot of you need to think about whenever you're going to be doing some kind of business venture. A lot of times, and in many cases, people don't understand the importance of having a contract. How important is that to you? Well, first, you know, you get a contract, you have to do what you have to do, so you know what I mean, to the best of your ability, you know? Mm -hmm. That's the whole aspect of it, and just go what you, you, you go about, and that's it. Yeah. Can't make any other thing distract you. So if you go to cut a tree, you know, it's a tree, you cut it and mm -hmm. you go, you know? And speaking of contracts, you know, many times when people are starting out, they don't have a contract in place and it always comes back to bite them. There are many reasons why people would choose not to get a contract. One is because some people don't understand laws and they don't understand the legal jargons and the legal terms. And another reason is that there are people who just don't know how to prepare a contract and then there are lawyers who prepare the contract but then it is too expensive and it takes too much time. So people just avoid it altogether. Well, luckily for us, all of us, there's this website called Precedent Docs, which is www.precedentdocs.com and they provide contracts for people like us. 
They have contracts for sale agreements, for power of attorney, for vehicle or for land. They also have contracts for service people, people with skills. It don't matter the skill set, whether you're a photographer, you're a gardener, you're a contractor, you're a chartered driver, you're a fitness instructor, you name it. As long as you are providing a service, there is a contract for you. So how it works is that there's a form that you fill out where they ask you some question and then a contract is automatically generated. It is as simple as that. You fill out the questionnaire and they put together the contract for you. So you don't have to worry about lawyer and all of these things everything is in there for you already talk to that doesn't sound good here's the next thing why i stress on you needing a contract let's say for example you're a painter and you got to offer your painting service to somebody that live at a house and the two of them agree that they're charging 50 grand right and when you finish painting the house and put in all of your time and your sweat and your effort into painting and then the person tell us listen i'm going to 30 may i give you you know so dog name is up right there so with a contract in place you would have signed off at the beginning that listen it's fifty thousand dollars i'm charging you for this so that at the end they have to give you fifty thousand dollars and if it's not you can take them to court and most likely you will win your case so that's why having a contract is super important. No matter how you may think you just do a little thing, believe me, the little thing we I do is a big thing to somebody. Get a new contract like at a, a big institution, uh, like four months now. Mm -hmm. And um, the lady said she, she respect me because there is something that I do where the next gardeners that come there never do. She they have some aloe vera, like a big little section, but they never weed it, but I did, so, you know, that okay. made the difference. So it look, it's, it looks simple, but that's what stand out, mm -hmm. you know, so. That's good. So it made me, you know, made me think more up. Because mm -hmm. she had the boss and she recognized that, so, you know, that's a big thing, a big deal, you know. Yeah, so you see that sometimes the little things make a big difference. Definitely. And it's about taking pride in your work and that's making sure that you put yeah. out the best of the best at all times because you don't know who is looking that is it that is you it. don't know who can recommend you to something else so you just have to do what yeah. you know you need to do mm. even if it's not asked of you but you see that something needs yeah, to be man, done you, yeah, well, yeah it is the way you have to do tell me about some of the other skills where you have so so far we know about gardening mm, we know about tea. making stepping stone you can do a little plumbing you know can I help plumbing. myself around the house you know mm -hmm. And little electrical if it's necessary, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For someone who is working at 9 to 5 and recognize that they have a skill, right? Would you encourage them to just quit the 9 to 5 one time and just get into the skill? Or you do it gradually? No man, gradually. You, you have to grow because you have to set yourself before you launch out. Mm -hmm. So you have to hold that as a security and you can't stop once, you know, you have to build yourself, set your thing and then you can launch out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just it and nothing hard. Everything takes time, a day at a time. And what about someone that doesn't have a 9 to 5 but they're there and they have a skill? Well, you just have to work on your skill, link with somebody who do it, till when you can buy your own equipment and you can start on your own. That's how you start. Mm -hmm. right. I just have to start. Yeah. So, Ches, I just want to say thank you so much You're for welcome. answering the question. And I hope that you guys are encouraged from this video, from he, even his experience that, listen, you have a skill, act on it. You can make some money from it. All right, guys, so from the discussion we had with Ches Dean, there are some takeaways that I want to make sure that you guys get in your head, right? So point number one, you need to identify your skill set. There are some things that come naturally to you and there are other things that you learn over time. So you're going to do some soul searching to see what is it that I'm actually good at. In Ches Dean's case, he didn't even know that gardening was going to be his skill. You know, he had some basic knowledge from farming which he transferred over into the gardening. And it wasn't until he went on that job with that person initially that he realized that, all right, this is something I can do. And all right, you know, these skills that I have, you know, the basic understanding I have, I can transfer it over here. And I'm sure after shadowing that person, 
you know, he would have learned some things and started to get better at his craft. So you have to identify what the skill is and what it is that you're going to be turning into an income. The second point is that when you are starting out, it is okay to offer your services for free or for a very low cost because at that point you don't have a portfolio you don't have a client base you don't have customers as yet so while you're honing your skills and even if the skill requires you to go get some formal education or formal training in the skill while you're doing that you're offering that service to people for very low cost and you build out and you start to cement yourself so that people know that all right this is what you are doing and then you can be recommended in the future and then you can also charge what you're actually worth it's okay to volunteer in the community that you're in depending on what the skill is and even if it, the skill is something digital you can offer your services for free at first until you have built out your portfolio and then you start charging point number three is to do the best at your job every single time do it so well that it speaks for you do it so well that somebody sees it and recommends you do it so well because that's the right thing to do do it show up get the job done all the time look at Ches dean's case when he just started he wasn't really charging he was volunteering a lot right and he did so well that people started to recommend him to the point now where he has customers for over 14 years so you just keep doing the right thing doing what you set out to do and it will pay off and you know in some cases too in doing the right thing it's okay to go a little extra to go a little above and be and in chesdine's case too look he had gone to go and weed out the aloe vera section not because he was told to do but he thought it was the right thing to do and because of that he was awarded a contract that's going on now for four months because he had done something to make a difference by doing the right thing you understand so you have to think about that when you're doing these things a bonus tip that is relevant especially now in 2022 in this digital age and this digital era is to create a social media page so while you're working you take photos little snippets little videos of it and you put it online whether you create an instagram page or facebook page whatever platform you choose but that's going to be your platform of choice for marketing yourself and you put it online and trust me you will get customers you will get eyes you will get the views after a while for the service that you're offering because you know everybody's online you are online watching this video right now and that's where the attention is so you have to put the work where the attention is a lot of time people shy away from oh i'm gonna like social media i'm not going online yada yada yada, yada. you don't have to put your personal self on it and you just need to post the work and target it in a particular way so that people who are interested in that kind of service can find you everybody's on social media do not neglect social media no matter what you think it is there's somebody that would want what you're offering trust me there's a market for everything tip number five is to be professional at all times show up on time do what you're expected to do dress appropriately for the job stick to the deadlines if you come to cut the tree like Ches Dean said cut the tree no matter what one nobody else has said just do what you're supposed to do and you do it in the most professional manner tip number six which is a very important point is to always have a contract in place always 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 cause things happen it's life that's just the way it is and no matter how small you think it is let me tell you as i said before it's big to someone else and especially when a time for you get paid you need to protect yourself so always have a contract in place and tip number seven which is the final tip from this video is to just keep working keep doing what you're doing and keep promoting yourself keep working and keep doing a good job so that your work speaks for itself and act as a promotion keep posting it online to do further promotion keep going out and do what you need to do and trust me you will start to see earnings on top of earnings on top of earnings as i say a lot of times we have these different skills and we sit on them we don't jump at it we don't try to say okay let me see how i can do it for whatever reason it is and in 2022 more than ever it's time to 
search for those things that you can do and do it on the side the price of everything gone up as you can see you know the one income is not going to cut it so you have to figure out how else am i going to do something in some cases sometimes you move into that full time just like chesdine says he has his nine to five and he does the gardening on the side and a lot of times people look down on certain jobs like gardening there's no need for job shaming it's a skill set you do it and when you feel like it's time to even move into that full time then you make the move you just make the right move at the right time and do what you have to do i want to say thank you guys so much for watching i have so much more useful and practical tips to give you guys if you're interested in hearing about any more please comment below i have so much in store and in fact i have another channel that's really gonna hone in on earning and to give you like practical and specific things that you can go after so when it's ready i'm going to be posting it in the pin section of this video and in the description so look out for it now thank you guys for watching and until next time